So everybody really likes Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm actually one of those people. I really enjoyed the movie. In fact, I probably will go see it again at some point in time while it's out. But I really wanted to take time right now, and I wanted to talk some about the spoilers in the movie. And I kind of wanted to go just a little bit more in-depth about some of the things that I liked and some of the things that I didn't like. And rather than start out with the positive, let's start out with the negative. And don't worry, they're not horrible negatives. Don't, I'm pretty sure I'll be even murdered in the comments for my shirt that I'm wearing right now. I'm still trying to cover this up, damn it. But let's talk about some of the characters in the movie. And the first one that I really want to talk about is Danny Glover in the movie. Now, he plays like this car thief, and he was supposed to be, by a lot of different fans, like wanted him to be Miles Morales. And in fact, I do believe he should be Miles Morales. Like, he is an amazing actor. I think he could definitely do be like the, the Spider-Man for, for that. And in this movie, he is not Spider-Man. He is not the shocker like everybody thought he was going to be because he was holding one of those weapons in one of the trailers. And I liked his character. Like his character is like really down to earth, but I kind of wish he was something more. And it turns out the name of his character is Aaron Davis. And Aaron Davis actually is, because you know, I obviously know this, he is the uncle of Miles Morales. Now, I looked up to see what character Aaron Davis actually might have been in the universe, and it turns out he's the character called the Prowler, which is totally 60s or 70s name if you think about it. And that character actually does have some special abilities because he does steal a suit from Oscorp and has, you know, all these mechanical abilities and everything like that. But I almost kind of wish he wasn't in the movie because he's in all the trailers. They, they hint up to him being like this really, really important character. And it turns out he is, but I don't really think that it was that necessary for him to be that in the movie. I don't even think that he needed to be in the movie at all because now that they were going to try to introduce Miles Morales and, you know, also this other guy going to be the, uh, the Prowler. And is that really needed? Is that something that they needed to have in the movie? And the answer is, I don't think so. There are certain things that you need to put in a movie to set up the future movies. And they really don't mention anything about the Kingpin or Mysterio or even the o Dr. Octopus. Like, all those are, like, some of the major characters, especially the Kingpin, where they could have easily tied that in. And that was one real negative thing. It was, like, at the end and credit scene where you see the Vulture going into prison and he sees the Scorpion in the prison and they basically are talking about the Sinister Six. And that's the thing that... I was wondering why at that point, like you already know the Kingpin from the Daredevil series is in prison. Like you could, they could have easily had a shot with the Kingpin and just having him at the bars or something, but they totally missed out on that. And that was one of the things that really disappointed me, but they did, they did try to set up the, uh, the Sinister Six, which was good, but they could have done a lot more with that. And one of the other things that kind of disappointed me, but not a lot, was Michael Keaton's portrayal of the Vulture. Now, I did say in my review that I really like Michael Keaton. I think that this role had a lot of potential for Michael Keaton, and he put a lot of his heart into it. Like, there were times when I was really scared that I really liked it, but the Vulture... Kind of like uh, the the Green Goblin just doesn't have a face. Like it, it's it's a it's a terrifying little green eyes. You know if that's staring at me at night, I'm like holy shit. But it really just seemed like there was like this really weird ebb and flow that he had throughout the entire movie where he was bad, but he had a good heart. He loved his family. When there was that part where it turned out that he was that that girl's father that Peter was really interested in when he opened up that door. I, I was surprised. I should have seen it coming. I mean, I've seen enough movies where I was like, oh my God, that should have ha that I knew that was going to happen. But I was really surprised. And Michael Keaton, because he's a good actor, was able to pull that off. But there were a lot of times where, like, his character, again, it was uneven. You know, even though he's a great actor, I just feel like they could have had better dialogue with him. They could have had him having more cataclysmic things that could have happened because of the things that he was doing. But the overall stuff is that it, it can, nothing can really be like you want it to be in the movies. You have to know when a movie is not going to go the way it's going to, but it's just going to kind of give you what it can, and then you kind of have to deal with it. And that directly goes into the character of Michelle, who's played by Zenaday. Now, I have not seen anything about Zenaday. I really don't know who she is. I know later in the year she's going to be in the new uh, Zac Efron and Hugh Jackman movie, uh, The Greatest Showman, uh, and she's going to be one of the uh, ballerina dancers in that one. But in this one, it's like they gave her this really sarcastic attitude like she doesn't care she's like an activist and i i like that about her character there are plenty of times in the movie where she does a really good job like you you see her and you like she like flips the bird to peter or something like that and it's really cool but at the end of the movie where she's like oh 
my name is MJ. And I, I was like, oh my God. It's, it's sort of like uh, in Batman v Superman where they, where they changed uh, Jimmy to Jenny. And it was like, it was, it was a, it was a, a, a male female switch, but I, I don't like it when they do that because they did that specifically because they wanted to draw more people in for the audience. And in this one, you're changing an ethnicity of a character, and there's I have no problem with that whatsoever. I think that's a really good thing. I think that there should be a black Batman. I think that there should be a black Superman. I think that all the different characters from this point on should be different ethnicities because they are that in the comic books sometimes. But when you change the actual dynamic of a character where you don't recognize who the character is, and then the character is like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm this character, it kind of threw me off. Like, I didn't expect, like, MJ in all the other series, she is in love with Peter Parker. She is, she wants to be with him, but he can't be with her. And that is one of the things that kind of draws us to Spider-Man, because he can't love anybody. And to change her character like that, I don't know if it's going to fit throughout the entire rest of the movie because then they're going to have to make her either fall in love with him or he's fawning after her. And in this one now, he's going for the other character. And I don't know how they're going to do that. I hope they don't even introduce Gwen Stacy because even if they have Gwen Stacy in there, then there's going to be just too much fighting over Peter. And I don't think that they're going to lose track basically of what it means to have the Spider-Man movie focused on Peter and the people he wants to save. As for the positives for this movie, there are just a ton of things that I really liked. I liked the overall tone of the movie. I liked how Peter Parker was Peter Parker and then he was also Spider-Man. There, there, and that sounds kind of weird, but it's, again, like I said in my, in my other review, uh, my non-spoiler review, it's hard to mold a character together like Peter Parker and Spider-Man because you have the really smart Peter Parker dealing with high school and stuff and then you have Spider-Man who's more or less invincible and doesn't have to worry about physically getting hurt a lot. And there's so many things that the movie does right with that. Now there's also, I'm gonna put in one other negative here because I'm also wondering how hard do you have to hit Spider-Man to make him bleed? Like there's the one point where, you know, Spider-Man in the other movies got hit with like a bomb in the face and it blew off half his mask and got him all bloody. But in this one, like I didn't understand when like, you know, uh, the vulture cut down the entire arena around Spider-Man and all the concrete knocked on him. Like how did that not crush him? Like I realize he's like, you know, has the strength of a spider and can lift up to, you know, like 20 or 200 times his weight. But there is a point in the movie where like, especially at that ending where I was like, I think they went a little overkill on, you know, trying to prove that Spider-Man was almost like godlike. But again, that's again, that's, that's a negative, but it was also a positive because at that scene, I actually really did feel like Spider-Man was, was crushed. Like he wasn't, he was hurt. But he was also crushed emotionally because in that scene, it was like I I got a little emotional with it because I was like he really you really saw Tom Holland get get down on himself like he really wondered if he could keep going you know could he be Spider Man could he still be Peter Parker and you know of course he lifts everything up and he goes and saves the day but it's really like that movie ticket price mo- moment that I usually say in some of my reviews is that this that moment where you realize a character is the character that they are truly that character. And that was the best scene for me in the entire movie. One of the other coolest things was the end of the movie where Spider-Man sees his new suit. I thought that was the best suit I had ever seen for Spider-Man. You know, like you have the futuristic Spider-Man suits, but that suit, I thought, I really thought it was going to be the iron spider where it has like that stuff that comes out from the back of it. And I, I wouldn't doubt that it, maybe it could be, but it looks like they molded a lot of like, uh, the the futuristic like tw- uh, Spider-Man 2099 or something like I can't remember exactly what it is but they like took that idea and then they molded it with the uh, uh, with the Iron Man suit and it, it looked amazing and at the end I thought it was really good too that they had him not join the Avengers like he goes throughout the entire process and then to have him say no and also the point where i guess tony stark married pepper potts which i thought was hilarious <laughs> he's like i mean even when happy pulled out the ring he's like i've been carrying this for since 2008 and he, yeah, here fine <laughs> you know like that was cool because you like you 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 see how how funny marvel can actually be and how they can connect themselves throughout the ent- all the movies 
And that's the most important thing about Spider-Man, which is most important thing about, you know, Marvel is like all their movies are, they're all interconnected. There are a lot of things that I think Marvel is still doing wrong. In fact, even in Spider-Man, in this Spider-Man version, they didn't kill anybody. Like, again, like, I, I want them. I need somebody to die. Like in the Spectacular Spider-Man 2, you had one of the main characters die. You had Spider-Man kill that character, and that was important. That was something that should have been happening in Marvel movies all the time. And that's, again, that's kind of a failure in this movie because even though the movie was PG-13, even though Disney did it, I needed to see somebody closer to Peter die to make him break, to make him, you know, be more be more down on himself and really question himself. But I don't know if that's really ever going to happen. I don't know, even in the, you know these future uh, uh, Avengers movie and Infinity War and stuff like that, they keep saying all these characters are going to die. But it's important that Marvel themselves decide to start killing characters. Not like everybody, like not the Hulk. I, I like the Hulk. Please keep the Hulk. But in general, I think that they there needs to be more emotional weight put on spider-man there needs to be things around him that fall apart and in this movie they do keep it very pg-13 but again marvel really needs to take that chance so i hope you guys really enjoyed my spoiler review of this maybe it was kind of more of like a rant i've never really done a spoilery type of review before but let me get a little whacked out comment below and let me know what were some of the best things that you saw in the movie and what were some of the things that you didn't like in the movie let me know in those comments and yeah never forget if you guys don't like what you're watching you can always turn it off but thanks for coming back and seeing me click